CBS News political contributor, longtime Face the Nation moderator Bob Schieffer is here to discuss. And Bob, once we have you trapped here inside, we're just going to run the gamut of things to discuss. So let's begin. Let's begin there. It's actually begun really with uh, Donald Trump's uh, becoming the presumptive GOP nominee. He began to walk things back. We heard suddenly that the temporary ban on Muslims he meant as merely a suggestion. We see now uh, the suggestion perhaps he's now admitting mistakes that it's all just out there to for people to judge I, I suppose I've I've found throughout this season that perhaps Donald Trump was merely a reflection of the electorate that had put him in, in place and it seems now perhaps more so than ever before what to make of the theoretical softening of tone there well, uh, he didn't take anything back, no. including uh, the comments about uh, John McCain, which, uh, you know, I thought, uh, Josh, in the very beginning, uh, people were so angry, and I understood where he was coming from. Mm -hmm. And I said way back there, I thought it was possible he could get the Republican nomination, which it looks like he's going to get. But along the way, when he would make these statements like John McCain is a loser, uh, I thought nobody can get past that because that's an insult to everyone who wore the uniform. And when he said, well, you know, John McCain was a loser because he was captured, uh, it brought to mind, well, what does he think of these people who lost their lives? You know, and, and yet he got past all of that. You know, he, it just... Uh, and as he pointed out, the numbers went up. And, and, and the numbers went up. And that, that was stunning to me. And... Uh, uh, I've been interviewing John, uh, I've been interviewing uh, Donald Trump for 30 years, but I'd never seen him on the stump till the South Carolina primary, and uh, <clears throat> I went out and before I, I just went out in the crowd and I said, just tell me what you like about him, and uh, you know I must have talked to 15 people before it started, and 14 of them must have said, I like him because he speaks his mind, and it it, it occurred to me that people were not necessarily taking him at his word. They were just glad that he was speaking out. I don't know if they thought, well, he's really not going to do that. But they just kind of like it was it was uh, about attitude mm -hmm. more than it was about what what he was actually saying. And and he, however zeitgeisty then uh, his rise has been, even his supporters have often said that when it comes to policy, for instance, that they trust that when the time is right, he will surround himself with people who, frankly, know of which they speak. And so to that end, today he is set to meet with former Secretary of State Henry Kessinger, obviously considered the elder statement, uh, statesman, especially when it comes to foreign affairs. Um, and yet, he in virtually the next breath says that he's willing, among other things, to sit down with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, uh, which would be a stark reversal of U.S. foreign policy. Uh, you know, I think, it's, it all? I, I think it's always wise to say, of course, we're always willing to talk. But I really wish he would kind of wait until at least he gets the first classified briefing uh, on world affairs before he starts mm -hmm. talking about uh, North Korea. Mm -hmm. This is a very dangerous situation there. Um, you know, assessments of Kim Jong-un range from being a lunatic to unhinged to unstable, and yet he has these nuclear weapons. Uh, there are some things more important than just commenting during a campaign. And uh, once he gets the nomination, he'll begin to get classified CIA briefings uh, on world affairs. I kind of wish he'd kind of just rein that back a little because bit. Because we've spoken until, to many people here who said that, uh, for instance, Barack Obama gets, in 2008, yeah. they might think they know how they feel about certain things, but but every candidate, new new president to office, mm -hmm. when they start seeing these briefings, develops, if nothing else, a far more. Uh, nuanced uh, understanding. I, I just think it would be better all around if he just kind of rein that, that particular subject in until he does get those classified briefings. Of the many new polls we've seen the last uh, couple of days, one number uh, that leapt out at me was, uh, especially in the context of uh, Paul Ryan's refusal to outright endorse Donald Trump uh, yeah. and the fact that Donald Trump had to come to them to a degree, went to the RNC headquarters to sit down. Um, here comes a number that says, uh, as we see here, who do you trust more to lead the Republican Party among registered Republicans and Republican-leaning uh, voters? 58 to 39 
in favor of Donald Trump. And I, I saw where yesterday Jeb Bush, in speaking with the Dutch news agency, uh, where he's headed to give a, a, a speech, said that he really thinks that perhaps we're seeing the final days of the GOP, uh, at least as currently constituted. What do you make now of this idea that perhaps Donald Trump isn't so much this renegade as he is now the entrenched leader of the party? Well, if, if he becomes the leader of the Republican Party, and it, you are seeing uh, more, quote, establishment kind of Republicans falling into line, and if not enthusiastic about it, at least saying, I think it's in our interest uh, to, to, you know, to support him, mm -hmm. uh, anything is better uh, than Hillary Clinton. Uh, but having, having said that, it, if, if Donald Trump becomes the leader of the Republican Party, it's going to be a much different Republican Party than we know about. I am not sure the Republican Party as we know it, and I mean, I've said this before, is really going to survive this. It, they may. They, they, they came back after that landslide defeat with the Barry Goldwater. Democrats uh, did come back after 1968 when their party came apart. But I would also say that the Democratic Party is still not the party it was. Bob Schaefer, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Great to be here, Josh.